Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I, um, I was uh, privileged to hear a uh, keynote speech this morning at the breakfast briefing given by Stephen, uh, who is the founder and the CEO of the Lateral uh, Thinking Factory. Um, it, a fascinating talk about the circular economy. I think it's, uh, it, it's um, going to be very challenging for our industry to sort of grasp this concept and, and make the most of it potentially. I think maybe for the audience, uh, those who weren't at the keynote speech, maybe you could start by explaining a little bit about what the circular economy is and, and how lateral thinking is not just about going green but making it a, a business opportunity mm -hmm. that can make us money. Yes, well, thank you very much. Um, the first point on, on your introduction, you said that this uh, marine leisure industry is, uh, is specifically touched by that. It's all industries in the world. Everything that is man-made is actually concerned. So circular economy is about moving from what we call, which is a contrary, the, the uh, linear economy, which is basically taking in nature, transforming, using, and throwing away, yeah. creating waste, whether it's burnt or it's in the, in the ground. Circular economy is not just about recycling. Recycling is quite easy. Most of things can be recycled once, whether you close the loop. So circular economy is not taking the linear economy and bend it, it's to actually create a continuous cycle, which hopefully at each cycle will actually increase like a spiral, because it will increase the value, it will purify materials and making them more and more usable for the future. And the idea is to come back to raw material each time. And there is a very basic and simple economical model behind that, is while you are using the raw material, under whether it's part of an engine, whether it's part of a hull or a sail or uh, you know, whatever uh, equipment, mm -hmm. Uh, during that time, the value of the raw material goes up. Even if there are some uh, waves and, and changes according to political issues or, or uh, you know, the OPEC price or, or something that changes, globally, raw material goes up, resources are scarce, so raw material goes up. So the model is actually to, to benefit from that difference in time. So, so potentially you're, you're saying that uh, as an industry, boat builders aren't realizing the full value, mm -hmm. the inherent value of a boat. Correct. Um, and so that ultimately is costing, I guess, the end, the consumer. Yes, well, the, the, the idea is, uh, well, first let's start with what is a waste. Yeah. A waste is something which we don't know where it is, we don't know what it is, we don't know what to do with, we don't know how much there is of, and we don't know the molecular or the, the, the real content. And that's waste. Mm -hmm. If you know where the material is, what it is made of, what you can do with it later on, whether it's the same thing or something else, you could do uh, you know, tennis shoes from, from, uh, from plastic from a boat, it's, it's no problem. Then it's not a waste anymore, it's what we call a, a technical nutrient. It's nutrient from, for the industry again. And therefore there is a, uh, intrinsic value in that material that at any point in time you can measure. And we have a great uh, luck, and certainly in the marine industry and the boat design, is that the, the 3D modeling and the, uh, the BIM, the building uh, information modeling uh, system, mm -hmm. allows you to actually identify everything in a building or in a boat or in a car and, and, and measure its quantity, and then you can just add a value at any point in time. Okay. So, so potentially you could have... Uh, a different, different business model for our industry. Yes. It could be taking that end value, the, the intrinsic value of the raw materials in the boat, that could be helped offset the, the initial purchase price. So yeah. potentially it could be any front-loaded costs to the consumer uh -huh. might be outweighed longer term when that person yes. comes to sell that boat. So they could actually earn an income from... Uh, sending that boat back to be dismantled. Is that, is that correct? correct? Is that correct. Possible? Well, first of all, it doesn't have a negative value at the end yeah. because normally you have to pay to get rid of a boat like you have to pay to get rid of a car or to demolish a building. If it has a value, then at least that's the minimum 
difficult to say now what that value will be in 20 years or yeah. in, in 30 years, but at least we know it's going to be a positive value rather than a, a liability or a negative value. Uh, the, the important thing is, is to use the material and the, the boat equipment as a service and not as something you own. You can, you can still own it. Uh, circular economy doesn't mean that you cannot own, yeah. but it works very well when you can actually rent the equipment because your supplier yeah. became, well, becomes your, your, your partner. Yeah. It's a really a partnership in time. He's not selling you something and saying, okay, when it breaks, uh, maybe come back. No, he's working with you for, to, to a winch on a boat yeah. could be your service. Yeah. And you don't own the winch, you, 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 you pay for the service of, of, of using it. And, and, and that, I think, is, is very important. We do that in buildings with, with lights, we do that with uh, uh, photovoltaic panels, with facades, mm. uh, gradually towards uh, steel structure yeah. and things like that. Uh, here in Holland, it, it's happening. Now, there's no reason why it cannot happen in the marine industry. Okay. I mean, so you're talking about moving it slowly to a, 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 a leasing model. Yes. Where people can lease. And, and you're not just talking about the GRP holes. You're talking about the equipment on board, every, every component on board a boat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to change the way boat builders have to manufacture boats. Is that yes. correct? Is that, does that need to be thought about well, more? Yes. First of all, they have to be built for disassembly. Yeah. So you can easily take things apart, but, which is more or less the case. And most, maybe apart from the hull, but, but most of it is, is built in a factory, it's been added, uh, bolted together sometimes glued, but most yeah. of it is, is quite easy to dismantle. That's why I, th I think it's an industry that could easily shift uh, for, for modular, because a, a lot of builders now are getting into modular construction and all that, so yeah. they, they regiment their construction techniques. It should be Co simpler to, to But e e Even with the 3D printing, uh, yeah. which obviously was the, the subject last year, I yeah. think, at the, uh, the METS, um, if you use and you choose the right material to put in your 3D printer, mm -hmm that is a recyclable, uh, upcyclable, as we say, the, 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 you know, a good material, not, not toxic for the environment, not toxic for human beings, mm -hmm. and that you can recycle, then there is, there is no problem in, in melting it and start, starting again. Yeah. Um, the rest of it, what, what, the, in terms of cost for the, cost, the end customer, uh, I would not say you'll get a better product for a cheaper price, but I think for the same price, we'll get a better product. Or, or you can mix a little bit of both. Um, globally, the cost of the raw material itself, let's say for a table like we have here, it's probably 20% of the cost of that table is the raw material. The rest is no. labor, transport, design, you know, whatever. It's probably about the same with, with, with boats. Um, it's maybe a bit less. But the, the raw material is paid for in time, is leased. Okay. So, in fact, you don't have to put the capital, you don't, don't have to put the cash at the beginning. Yeah. You pay as a service in time. In buildings, we start to see that the, the carpet industry is working with uh, maintenance companies, yeah. and the cost of the carpet is, is, is spread over a number of years, and it's part of the maintenance. At the end of the day, the customer doesn't pay for the carpet, it pays for the service, and if you look at the addition at the end, at the total, it's cheaper. Yeah. And you are sure that when your carpet has a problem, it will be replaced by the maintenance company and it will be maintained properly. And also the carpet manufacturer has a very big interest in producing a much better quality carpet, mm -hmm. so it doesn't have to be replaced that often, or it resists better, or it cleans the air, or it does, it does other things. Yeah. So it's the whole thing is to improve quality. That should never, be, maybe I did not insist enough this morning on that. The whole aim is not green issues and not only financial, it's improving quality of products. Yes. But, but in the boating world, we have, I mean, it's made up of small, medium sized enterprises, they have small R&D departments. Yes. Um, yes, you can go to uh, the manufacturers of the polymers that you use and say, can you provide this? But I imagine they'll say, well, you're only going to order that amount of that product, so it's not cost-effective for us uh -huh. to tailor uh, production to suit your needs. We'd have to rely somewhat, I guess, on a trickle-down from 
what Boeing is doing or what some of the major uh, automotive manufacturers are doing. Is that correct? Is that going to be the case? Well, still? The, 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 the product you will be developing for mm. your boats will be useful for bath tubs or for something yeah. else, which is probably millions of bath tubs compared to thousands or hundreds of yeah. boats. So uh, all the industries have an interest in working together yeah. in developing these products. And it's obviously the big industrial companies yeah. But I have to answer a demand that comes from the customer, your end customer, mm -hmm. the guy who's using the boat, yeah. to the guy who builds the boat, to the guy who supplies the pieces, and he goes to the uh, polymer manufacturer and says, this is really what I want. Yeah. And if other industries, bath tubs or you know, building parts or car parts or yeah. whatever, come and ask the same question, then it will make sense and yeah. you'll have an uh, economy of scale uh, in that research yeah. and development. So the boating sector has to look beyond its own limited boundaries, yes. you think? Do you think we're not very good at that at the moment from what you've seen initially? Do you think well, we've what, what is potential? frustrating as, as, as an architect, yeah. I always took example on boats and on planes yeah. because, and, and sometimes cars, but uh, because that's where the, the technology is evolving. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the, mil the military because that's yeah. unfortunately also a good place for innovation. Yes, yeah. Um, but it's frustrating to see that today the marine industry is behind in terms of inventing new materials to be able to be upcycled. Mm -hmm. Where the building industry, which is working only by one-offs, uh, you design one building, mm -hmm. it's quite rare to design two buildings exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Where the boat industry that always for me has been an example of innovation, and it still is, we, we, yeah. we, we, we see all the, the examples here. Mm -hmm but maybe not so much in terms of material. I, I suggested to a friend of mine who was involved in, uh, in, in building up one of the teams for the America's Cup, and I told him, why can't we put in the specification of the America's Cup that all the materials have to be recyclable? Yeah. You know, so, okay, problem with carbon fiber, how do you deal with the glues, how do you deal with all these things? Okay, you don't need to do it all at once, yeah. but Formula One in cars is doing it now, and you have the uh, electric Formula One yeah. uh, that came out of that. I think the boat industry should, should, should follow the same, the same steps. And this, just to, to qualify, this is not about being green, is it? I mean, you, you want, you, you're going beyond that in terms of it, it's a, the eco-effectiveness, I think you called it, rather uh -huh. than the eco... Efficiency. Uh, efficiency, yes. Yeah. So it's about getting increased value from exactly. being... Well, to be, to be uh, efficient is just being less bad, is to consume yeah. less material or... But it's not, it's not something very exciting. If yeah. you come back to home and you say to your children, oh, today I drove only 12 kilometers and not 24, yeah, great. And so the children yeah. say, so what? Yeah. If, if you say, today I drove 24 kilometers, but you know what? My car produced water and oxygen. Yeah. Yeah, this is a vision, uh, which we're not so far from with the hydrogen technology. Um, so in, in, in the boat industry, I really think that's beyond showing the way it should actually act for, its, for, for the, the, the perennity of its own business mm -hmm. and, by the way, improve the green yeah. issues. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, always, I, I didn't say this morning, but normally I say, and you do all this and it works, yeah. and by the way, it might help the polar yeah. bears. But yeah. you're not doing it to help the polar bears to start with. Yeah. Some people will, but most people in the industry is not their day-to-day -day concern. Yeah. But if they can come back home and say that my business is doing something good and it is helping the you know, monkeys in the forest or, or doing yeah. something like that, you can always uh, give, give an image to what you're helping, uh, which, which is to do with uh, greenhouse gases or, or, or things like that. You can always have a positive impact. It, all of this might sound a, a, a little bit abstract for, for a boat builder who for the last few years has been struggling to make any profit, who, who uh -huh. work on, uh, you know, sort of very small profit margins. They must be thinking, how can we invest in this? It's not a... But, but this is happening, isn't it, in, a, in, in other industries? People are making good money out of this. I mean, yes. you mentioned Tesla, I think, in, in the keynote. Um, well, t t Tesla is not so much in the circular economy, but... They were the first one to really uh, produce cars, electric cars, which are sexy, yeah. which works well, that have some, you know, and apparently there is another brand coming up in the States for the moment yeah. uh, competing. And a lot of companies like BMW and Renault and whatever, they're, they're, they're all coming, coming to it. Uh, they made a big advance. And one of the things they, they, they made is to say, I sell you the, or I rent the Tesla to you or I sell it to you. 
and when you give it back, I give you 50,000 euros. You pay it 100,000, oh, that's a lot of money. But when you bring it back, you get 50,000, and that's the value of the material, the, the batteries, and everything that's in there. And they know that with a Tesla, they can do another Tesla. So they are already yeah. in that mind. But it's mainly to do with batteries. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, an amount of, of rare earth metal and, and, and material that are very expensive mm -hmm. in these batteries. And uh, we know it's limited because we all talk about electric cars, but there are only two sources, one in South America yeah. and one in China from where it comes from. Mm -hmm. So everybody's working on trying to find other ways of creating batteries. That's why I keep saying that I think hydrogen is the next technology okay. uh, because it's, it's a way of storing energy uh, as mm -hmm. well. Long story, but uh, in, in, in all cases, you have to be able, at the end of the day, to be able to separate the raw materials, even in your battery, even in your car, in your boats. You really have to be able to disassemble, first of all, what is in the biological cycle, which is uh, basically biodegradable. Yeah, yeah, okay. I could make humus out yeah. of it, so I put not humus, but humus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and then the technological cycle. And the technological cycle is actually a continuous cycle mm -hmm. where you use the products, you use the raw material, but you don't consume it. To consume is like consuming, it's, it's burning it, huh? Uh, but, but you consume food, you consume uh, what, what the agriculture is produce, producing is consumed. Okay. So boats, some of them are made uh, still in timber and it's a, it's a very good material coming back actually in, in yeah. quite, a few, uh, quite a few manufacturers. But if the timber is mixed with some products to glue it and all that, then you cannot turn it into mm -hmm. um, um, biological material anymore because it's polluted. Yeah. So, it's, so it's, it, the only way to get rid of it is to burn it in, yeah. in that case. So you have to be really careful to be able to separate them. But also, I, I gave the example of the, uh, the, the mega ships that yeah. uh, uh, Mars are, are, are designing. I think they are 400 meters long. It's something yeah. crazy. Um, there are different kinds of steels in, in these boats. Mm -hmm. And in general, what they, until now, all these commercial ships, at the end of their life, they go on a beach somewhere and somebody cuts them, if, if it's not kids, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and mix all that steel and, and you know, put it on the market and melt it all together somehow. Uh, so what they are doing is that the extra strong steel and the different kind of steels are, are actually labeled with yep. a, a barcode. Um, and when you dismantle the boat at the end of the day, you can reuse the same quality of steel, so you don't lose quality. Okay. You're talking about these material passports that you mentioned, yes. mm -hmm. that each component part will be, have its own DNA, so to speak. Exactly. That you'll be able to... To trace um, it. Yes, to trace it, and it increases its value. Are, are you saying that ultimately this could bring down the cost of boats to the end user? Yes, Yeah. I think so. It's either it's bringing the quality up or it's bringing the cost down. Okay. Um, I think what is quite interesting in terms of finance is that the, uh, since 2008, uh, the financial world has to, or certainly the banks, have to create a new image, but also a new role for themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're closing one after the other. We heard ING closing yep. uh, some offices in Belgium and all that because it's all replaced by computers and... and, and, and and it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. So they have to find new, new models. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about circular economy, in these models, well, the bank or the insurance companies or the leasing companies, and generally they do the three, three yeah. of them, they can actually um, be the, um, the actual owner yeah. uh, or the financiers behind this, this system and pay for the raw material and they just ask the manufacturer who asks you at the end of the day to pay yeah. because you own your boat, just to pay the interest okay. on the value of the material while you are using it. But you don't actually pay for the raw material itself yeah. because at the end of the life of your boat, of your building, of your car, you will give this raw material back to the same price as you bought it at the beginning. Okay. In the meantime, the price has gone up. And that's where all the banks, all the manufacturers, everybody is going to make money and okay. you will pay less. So there's a speculative element to this yes. that people could make money off the back of this. This, but it's speculative with something that no. goes back in a cycle. Yes, okay. It's not okay. speculative on something that you dump afterwards, okay. which is very okay. important. Okay, interesting. I mean, if I was a boat builder, I mean, if I came to you, how do I start doing this? I mean, it, it seems like a mountain to climb. To you know, would I just start with one boat model, perhaps? I mean, how how would you get this into your system? How would you work this in 
realistically speaking, for, for these small manufacturers? It, it's very complex if you try to attack it all in one, yeah. in one go. I mean, nobody's perfect. Uh, so we call it the roadmap towards circularity or towards yeah. cradle to cradle. And uh, the, the idea, that's what we do as Lateral Thinking Factory, is, is to help setting the roadmap step by step, things that need to be measurable, to say, OK, in five years' time, I want all the boats that I do to be 50% recyclable. Yeah. OK, not 100%, not possible. And then you push a bit further, and you say, maybe in, in 10 years, I don't want to, to have any toxic materials at all in the whole boat. Yeah. And you will see that if you demand that, yeah. your service providers or your product produ providers or your mm -hmm. suppliers will have to follow you. Yeah. You set that in your specification. You say, I will buy your product and install it on my boat if you have such and such cradle to cradle or circular economy yeah. qualities to it. And that's what we do with buildings. We try, mm -hmm. We're trying to, in each building, to find two or three circular uh, economy elements. Yeah. It could be the way of treating water, the way of producing energy, or the way of cleaning the air, or the way of uh, having good natural light in the, in the building, as a specific element that they push further. And that is recorded as cradle-to-cradle -cradle inspired. There is an official organism in Germany, in Hamburg, actually, uh, university, no, in um, uh, TU Munich, sorry, um, which registers it. And those progress can be shared with other people doing buildings. So you could do the same thing in the marine world. So you could do component parts, individual yes. bits of the boat, say the engine or say the batteries or the generators. Mm -hmm. Some elements could be, and you could increase that yeah. year on year. In each boat model, you could increase the, the, the number the, of the, the whole idea is to be able to advertise the good things you've been doing. This, is yeah. the, the, this morning, the green lines, huh? mm -hmm. uh, how to be eco-effective. Yeah. But to be effective is to have uh, uh, further effects than just yeah. doing the thing you normally do. Yeah. Uh, which is to be efficient, because in, to do a business you have to be efficient, yeah. you cannot waste energy, you cannot, you know, uh, the industry knows very yeah. well how to be efficient, mm -hmm. it doesn't always know how to be effective. To be effective you need to have innovation, and you need, you need to go beyond, you, have to, you need to have a vision, and if you can show the good things you are doing, and most of the manufacturers I'm sure that are exhibiting the 1470 yeah. exhibitors here, I'm sure that they're all doing something which is very good. Yeah. They're also doing things that are bad. And unfortunately, for the moment, we tend to see more what is not working rather than what is working. Yeah. And if they can already look in their process what is already circular economy, then it will be encouraging. Mm -hmm. And then they say, OK, then I can push another one, another element, yeah. and I can move like that. But Nobody but starts from zero. But extending that circular metaphor a little bit further, the component manufacturers have surely got to be talking more to each other. They've got to be yes. working together much more. The collaborative way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is that the way? And, and boat builders too? Is that, is that a way potentially that, that, that these R&D costs can be I th met? I think or? they should. I think all the other in most of the other industries do. Yeah. You know, uh, even the car industry where... You, you see the engine from one in the car of the other, even yeah. if Formula One, they start to mix you know, uh, yeah. all sorts of components. Uh, so, I mean, on complex items like boats, mm -hmm. there is not one manufacturer that doing everything. So, of course, you work already yeah. in collaboration with others. Uh, the idea is to push that further. There is no, no, no progress in circular economy if you don't have a collaborative yeah. feeling. And the, I, let me give you an example. Um, a friend of mine was looking for a very nice fabric to do curtains in a hotel. And we found this handmade fabric, uh, so another friend of mine, in Senegal. When they brought that fabric over, because of the regulations here, they had to be sprayed with lots of uh, fire retardant products and whatever. And of course he said, but that's not what I asked for. This, this, is, this is a terrible product now. It was a fantastic product and now it's a terrible product. How can I do it? And within the cradle-to-cradle -cradle community of companies, people are thinking yeah. the same. Philips uh, were producing a TV set where to be with less pollution had worked on a, on a biological, uh, biologically sourced uh, fire retardant for their electronic uh, components in the TV yeah. set. Yeah. This cost a lot of research to Philips. Yeah. This cost a lot of research to a company that was providing this product. But they were just selling a very, very small quantity for TV sets. 
Then Philips said to the uh, fabric manufacturers and the fabric industry, they said, you could use it on fabric as well, and it's, and it's totally safe. Then the, the, the company that's producing that fire retardant made a very good business. The price went down, Philips was happy, and, and uh, the, manufacturers, uh, the, the fabric manufacturers were very happy. Yeah. So it's all, it generally is win-win, that's what we find. Okay. But it, I mean, we talk on our industry now of the changing consumer trends, that, that the, the next generation are less interested in owning boats. Uh, they, 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 wanna, they want the user experience, they don't want the ownership experience. But are, is, is this model of simply shifting the capital ownership to another corporate body? Is it is simply putting power and control of the big manufacturers and the user is left picking up the, the bill and have nothing to show for it ultimately? Is that, is that Well, th th there is always that danger of monopoly yeah. uh, 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 creation. Uh, first of all, you're right. I think we are in a society where the young generations are more into the, the zapping. Huh? They want yeah. to do one activity for, I mean, I, I cannot count the number of uh, tennis rackets and, and uh, hockey sticks and golf clubs or whatever that we have at home because uh, our kids tried one thing and then abandoned it something yeah. else. I wish I'd rented them yeah. <laughs> in the beginning. It's the same, it's the same with boats, with transport system. Uh, my children today, they don't see any point in owning a car. They, they, they ask me why yeah. I still own a car. It's 10 years old and I love it, but yeah. you know, at some stage, the next one I will rent it, and it will be electrical, if possible yeah. hydrogen, if, it, if it's working. Uh, it's the same, we, have, we, we inherited a, a, a small powerboat, a 19 foot powerboat in, uh, in Spain from my uh, father-in-law. I will never buy a boat anymore, I will rent it. It cost yeah. me twice to maintain it, yeah. than to rent it for the time I use it. Okay. I calculated, it, cost me, it would cost me 2,000 euro a year to rent, Okay. For the period of time that my nephews, we are there for the, the sort of two months or whatever, and it cost me 4,000 euros to maintain. And, and the guy who's renting it, he has hundreds of boats yeah. in the marina, whatever, and, and uh, these boats are running you know, at yeah. least three or four months during yeah. the year rather than two weeks. And, and one hour a day during those two weeks. So, so in short, this, this, what you're saying, so the economy is a, a huge opportunity for our industry. Yeah, yeah. I think so because the, the ownership will maybe go towards the people who are renting and maybe the ownership of that will go to the banks because they, they, they obviously uh, uh, borrowed money to, to do that. Uh, and the banks are happy because it goes with insurance, it goes with leasing contracts, with all sorts of things. And then behind that, you should have pension funds or long-term yeah. uh, vision who are taking care of the fact that the material one day are going to go back in the industry that yeah. on that value. Because you, you cannot do that over five years. Yes, yeah. you, can, you can do that with, with uh, a, a plastic cup. Okay? It, has, yeah. it has a value and then you can recycle very fast. But uh, for, for, for boats or houses or cars, it, it, it's a bit longer in, in, in the process. But it can be used a number of times by different owners until it's actually upcycled into something yep. else okay. as okay. well. So in the end, uh, boat builders will simply become service providers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, the, the world is going towards a service industry. Yeah. Uh, I, d I don't want to... to today, if I, if I was today to, to, to choose an apartment somewhere, first of all, I would look at all the services that that apartment, uh, apartment can do because yeah. uh, I know that in 10 years' time, I would not want to go to uh, the shop. I, I would like to have maybe uh, one guy who is uh, repairing everything when I have a problem mm -hmm. and, and whatever. And if it's shared, it doesn't cost more than doing yeah. it yourself in, in, in a way because yeah. uh, it's mutualized. And, and circular economy is about mutualization and cooperation. Okay.